So see, when you're doing things that nobody has ever done before, you can expect glitches like that. Welcome back to Pray First, everybody. Um, I'm gonna get this in. I'm going to not short you in any way. This is Memorial Day in the United States of America. And today we honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And that ultimate sacrifice was their lives. Today we honor those who fell while fighting for something that they believed in. And while many of us are celebrating, you know, with pool parties and barbecue, and that is right to do, we should celebrate their lives. We should celebrate, but we should remember that they, much like Scripture says, no greater love has any man than this, that he should lay down his life for his friends. I think it would be right for us this morning to have a moment of silence. So I'm just going to take a moment and let's remember those who are not celebrating a holiday, but remembering their fathers, their mothers, their husbands, their wives, their sons, their daughters, and their brothers and their sisters today who gave the ultimate sacrifice while in service. Let's have a moment of silence. Thank you. Everybody hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded and get this out on your page. We've got to talk about something today that all of us have some experience in and that is this. Is there things that just consistently aggravate you? Are there things that are just constantly, it seems like the same thing keeps coming up and no matter where you go, no matter what job you're in or school you're in or or, or where you are, there are those same things that are just nagging you, poking you, pop, 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 just poking you, making you uncomfortable, making you angry, making you hurt, making you bitter. I mean, it's just constantly this thorn in your side. We've been talking about for the past couple of days, past couple of, you know, at least last week, there are four categories of people and that we're all in those categories and that in each of those four categories that Satan, our enemy, is trying to steal the word of God from us. And we took that back to Mark chapter 4 to talk about the parable of the sower and the seed. So I just want to quickly remind you of our categories. Remember, there's those who are exploring God. They haven't been saved yet, but they're in fellowship. That's what that little F stands for. They're in fellowship with believers. They're your friends. They're your family. They're your neighbors. They're visiting our church. They're your coworkers. And they're exploring God. They're not, you know, they're not opposed to faith. Then they come through grace and salvation through the cross of Jesus Christ, and they're beginning in God. They're in a relationship with God now, but they're learning and then they go through God's word and the authority of God's word and they begin to practice God's word and follow God's word. And God's word is no longer, you know, just one of the options. It's not just a factor in their decision making process. It is their decision making process and they become close to God and they become a disciple. They start acting on the word of God. And then when they start acting on the word of God, they find that the word of God asks us to give our life for others. And they learn giving and they become God centered. And all of these are growing. All of these are growing. And anytime you stop growing, you backslide. Thank God we can't backslide through the cross. And all God's people said, amen, because God's salvation, God's love is not based on performance. It's based on proximity, being close to him. Hit some hearts, hit some likes and say, yep, yep, thank the Lord. And we've been talking about how the parable of the soils found in Mark chapter 4 relates to that. So again, remember, I had to change my setup today because the first live didn't go. So I'm going to bring my scripture over. Look at Mark chapter 4, verses 13 through 19. Mark chapter 4, verse 13 through 19. And Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable of the soils? If you don't understand this parable of the soils, you're going to have a hard time understanding any parable. How then will you understand the other parables? The sower sows the word. 
And these are the ones that land on the wayside where the word is sown. Now listen to this. This is for the people who are exploring God. Listen to what happens when the word is sown and the gospel is preached and there is a lost soul present who is beginning to explore God. Listen to what the enemy does. These are the ones by the wayside when the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately takes the word of sown in their heart. And Matthew takes that a little further and says, so that they will not believe and they will not be saved. Those are the people found in the exploring God category. The next soil says, these likewise are the ones who are sown on stony ground. This is the people who are beginning in God. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. And they have no root in them, and so they endure only for a time. And afterward, tribulation comes, difficulty comes. God didn't do what they thought he would do if they got saved. Persecution arises for his namesake, and immediately they stumble. We've all been there, haven't we? Immediately they stumble. Again, the enemy comes with the stony ground and takes you know, our hard soil and begins to use it against us, and we stumble in the word. Verse 18 talks about the third group that we're talking about today. Now, these are the ones sown among the thorns. Everybody hashtag thorns. These are the people who are getting close to God. You start getting close to God and you're going to recognize that there is an upbeat in Satan's attacks against you. How many of you have ever recognized that? Seems like the closer you get to God the higher the spiritual atmosphere is or the hotter or the temperature of the attacks against you become. That is absolutely accurate and it is absolutely scriptural and it's spoken of right here in Mark chapter 4, verse 18. These are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Let's stop like right there. We're, we've talked about three soils, and we've talked about three categories of people. We've talked about those who are beginning in God when the gospel comes, when the word comes, that Satan immediately comes and takes it, so they will not hear, they will not believe, they will not be saved. We talked about the second group, those who are beginning in God, that as they are beginning in God, tribulation comes, hardship comes, things come up, these are the ones by the waysides. When they hear, immediately he takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Come on. Immediately he takes it away. And as you get closer to God, you're going to find that there's going to be seeds sown and the thorns are going to come. Hashtag thorns. I want you to notice in all three categories that the enemy is stealing the word from you. Let's take a closer look at that. Mark chapter 4, verse 7. Jesus says, And some seed fall among the thorns, and the thorns grow up and choke it, and it yields no fruit. It yields no crop. Then he explains that down in verses 18 and 19 of Mark chapter 4. These are the ones that are sown among the thorns. They hear it, and when they hear the word, the cares of this world, we're going to talk about this tomorrow, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter and choke it out, and it becomes unfruitful. What do thorns represent? Before I tell you what thorns represent, remember that the Word of God quite oftentimes uses parabolic speech or parabolic language. In other words, He uses something to represent something else. And we all know this to be true. We find that in, in Genesis when He uses the word serpent to represent Satan. And then we look in Revelation Revelation tells us that the serpent is the devil, Lucifer, that old, you know, serpent of old. He describes him in general, and he describes them completely in detail in Revelation. Here's the point of that as you begin to study the Word of God. The Word of God always interprets itself. Hashtag interprets. If you read something somewhere, go to a concordance. Look at all the other areas that that word is used, and you'll be able to have the Bible interpret Scripture for you. So before we talk about thorns, let's talk about serpents, scorpions, and what they represent in the atmosphere of spirituality. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 19. Then the 70 disciples returned with joy saying, Lord Jesus, the demons, hashtag demons. Do you believe in demons? Well, they're real. 
Even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. What is Jesus saying there? I'm not impressed. When he did not apply or he did not comply with my father's will and my father's word, I watched Lucifer fall from heaven like lightning. It was fast, it was quick, and it was hot. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. That mean we should run through the wilderness and step on snakes and kick scorpions in the tail? That's not what it means. He says he's, he's di directly relating this in context to the demons. Have, we have authority over the demons. He says, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. Serpents and scorpions represent demonic activity. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation. Guys, listen to me. These are the people who are beginning in God, getting close to God, the thorns come up, the demonic activity begins to increase, the heat begins to stir, you begin to feel the pressure, you begin to feel the pull of the undercurrent of culture, you begin to feel the pull of the undercurrent of your